This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. Now we're going to look briefly at performance appraisal. This is typically done uh, through the use of an interview with your manager once a year. The aim of performance appraisal should be to uh, overall improve organisational performance and also to develop individuals to tell them where they've done well, tell them where they've not done so well, uh, and uh, maybe arrange training programs or arrange some sort of coaching uh, so that they can have an opportunity to improve. And of course, that should then uh, improve organizational performance. What it should not be is some sort of kind of finger wagging act, uh, uh, exercise where the manager is there kind of telling off the employee for doing badly. Uh, quite understandably, employees are likely to react badly to that. It's going to be very demotivating. Uh, and it's unlikely that just by telling someone off, particularly if it's in, a, in a, an aggressive way, that you're going to either improve personal performance or organizational performance. The idea is that it should be supportive you're saying, you know, you're doing quite well, but in these sort of areas we're a little bit weak, uh, uh, a little bit of improvement would be good. Can we give you some help to improve there? Uh, and this will, this will, uh, you, you know, really enhance your job security and prospects in the future. You, you need to be very positive. Criticism needs to be made if necessary, but you must not underestimate how badly some people can react to criticism. The um, uh, appraisal systems uh, often can be divided into three elements. Uh, first of all, uh, or perhaps first of all, we'll actually start with the second one here, uh, it will look at uh, performance over last year. Uh, and for this, uh, it ought to be based as much on fact as possible. Uh, your manager should uh, talk to people you've worked with, maybe talk to clients, people you've interacted with, and so on, uh, to get their judgment about how you have performed. Uh, managers themselves may not get a, may have some view on how you're performing, but they may not get the whole story. So they need to collect a lot of information. And then uh, what they will be looking at is what your future potential might be. So they might possibly say that uh, we're going to send you to a particular department for six months to give you some experience there. And then maybe in about two years, you'll be able to be promoted to the position of manager because by then you'll be kind of well-rounded. So it's looking back and it's looking forward. Uh, and usually at appraisal meetings, you're told what next year's salary is going to be. Although there is a, a body of opinion which says that the reward element here should not happen at the appraisal meeting because the manager might say, yes, your performance last year was great. Uh, we have great hopes for your future. Your potential is great. But of course, there could be serious economic reasons why your salary is going to be held down. Maybe the, the company as a whole is not making profits. And it doesn't maybe look too good if you say, that's great, that's great, but uh, we can't really increase your salary more than inflation. So some people would say that you should uh, really keep these almost like six months apart, divorce the relationship between reward uh, and performance potential so that the reward can be based on performance, of course, uh, but also what the company can afford, what the going rate for your ability of employee actually is. Note that often now it's not just top-down uh, appraisal which is uh, done, uh, that appraisals are 360 degrees, that your manager appraises you, you appraise your manager, and everyone appraises all their colleagues around the place. Uh, so you end up with a, a very uh, really comprehensive view of how everyone's doing in the organization. It doesn't really make sense if your manager is not appraised as a manager uh, and the person, the people who know best 
how well the manager functions in the managerial capacity are going to be the manager's subordinates. The appraisal interviews, what goes on within this? First of all, uh, it is essential that the manager prepares properly. Appraisals are often a, a big, a big moment, if you like, a big annual moment in an employee's working life. They waited a whole kind of year to see how they're getting on, uh, to hear feedback and so on. And the, it's very discouraging if you go into your manager and your manager doesn't know what you've been doing, doesn't know what projects you've worked on, uh, and, and, is, and is kind of just making it up as he or she goes along. The manager should take time to gather feedback from people uh, to see how you performed during the year. Should look at last year's appraisal, maybe to see the weak points. Uh, look at last year's appraisal to see what training courses had maybe been planned for you. See whether they were actually carried out uh, and, and so on. Uh, otherwise, it's just the manager kind of going through the appraisal interview because every year you have to go through an appraisal interview but it is deeply unsatisfactory for both sides. So proper preparation, uh, in a way, respecting the employee and doing your homework is important. Then there's the interview. And there are various ways in which this can take uh, place. Uh, the manager kind of filled in a form before you get there. Typically the way these forms are, uh, you have a in kind of minus five here, through to zero, through to plus five. So minus five is very bad, plus five is very good. And then uh, maybe there's something on, on kind of timekeeping. There's maybe something on technical ability. Uh, there's maybe something on uh, getting on with clients. So you would be, to make it as factual as you can, you break down uh, performance over as many... Um, elements, if you like, as is practicable. And then your manager in the tell and sell uh, would basically fit it in here, your plus one there, your minus two there, etc, etc. And your manager would simply tell you, this is why I've given you those scores, but they ain't never going to change. Uh, and uh, the manager even isn't even asking particularly uh, for why you think maybe this minus four on technical ability or something is unfair. So the communication is not great in that. The next one is tell and listen. And in uh, tell and listen, the, the manager will have filled in the form before you go in. Uh, but then in, the manager will say, look at the uh, technical ability, that's minus four. What do you think about that? And, and it will allow you to maybe put your side of the case that the technical ability was low because I was given a project for which I had received no training whatsoever. The scores may not change, but at least you feel that you have been more fairly dealt with. And finally, there is an approach which is called problem solving. Typically, what might happen is you go in and the form is blank. Uh, and the manager says, OK, how do you think you were on timekeeping? And you say, oh, I think I'm plus five in that. And the manager says, well, you, you were late on three days, and it, did, it didn't mean the client was kept waiting on one of those days there. Do you remember that? Mm, yes, I do. So, so maybe you come to a kind of consensus that plus four might be OK there. And then you go on to the, the technical ability, and the manager says, how, do you, how competent do you feel technically? Have you had any any problems dealing with the software or uh, whatever? And you can kind of discuss that and you come to a kind of conclusion that, yeah, it's maybe a little bit weak and maybe we ought to put some work there. The idea of problem solving is that because you are basically negotiating the score on the way down, it is almost guaranteed to provoke much better interaction uh, and communication between the manager and the subordinates. What uh, we then uh, have to do, assuming we have got uh, agreement, 
uh, uh, on, on the scores and where there are weaknesses and, and, and so on. You need to gain, or the manager needs to gain commitment uh, from you. Yes, I am going to improve that. I'm going to pay attention to that and so on. Uh, you, you agree on what needs to be done and you summarise it. Uh, and there's usually some sort of report which is produced which both the manager and the employee is going to sign. And this will be filed in your personnel record uh, and will be looked at next year, will be looked at uh, if you are maybe applying for promotion and so on. It will be looked at maybe when they come to be uh, thinking about next time's salaries. It's important that the manager does take action. In other words, if the manager says, right, we'll put you on a training course to make it good those technical areas where you're a little bit deficient, that that's actually done. Or if the manager promises you, I will try and second you for six months to another department so you can fill some gaps in your knowledge by working there for six months, then that is done. Again, the whole system will fall into disrepute if many promises are made to you uh, and none of them are kept. And finally, uh, the manager should monitor progress. A year might be too long to wait to see if, if someone is responding to the interview and is responding to the extra experience, is responding uh, to the training. It may be relatively urgent that that person's performance can be improved. Uh, thereby increasing the organisational performance as well.